Hello everybody, I'm Andy with Luminal Entertainment Technologies, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a custom interface for Zoom using the Isadora Media Server. And a huge shout out to Mark Caniglio, who created some modified plugins for the Media Server that allows us to have dynamic searchable lists, which is a huge part of integrating Zoom OSC into the program, so that we can see who's there and how to interact with them. So let me show you what we made, and what he did, and what I've done to modify it, and how it all comes together. So here I am inside of Isadora. On the left hand side is my controller view, and on the right hand side is my scene editor. And what Mark has done is allowed us to modify a list inside of the control surface from within the scene editor. So what I'm going to do here is demo what he provided where I can hit the A key to change the input values inside of that clickable list on the left hand side. This is a modified version of the radio button. And I can hit the S key to go back to uh, the other names here. So again, by doing some live action inside of the scene editor, you know, toggling between the A and S keys with the keyboard watcher, I'm able to impact the selectable options from the radio button. And this, is, this has huge consequences for a whole lot of applications. Let me show you how I used it inside of Zoom OSC. So if we hop into my patch, you'll see that I've done something a little more complicated, but um, it still builds on the same fundamental principles. Um, and what I've done here is I've combined this dynamic list option with the list output from Zoom OSC. And what this allows me to do is populate this list on the left hand side with all of the usernames in the Zoom call. So you'll see that when I hit the manually update list button, all of those usernames will file in an order. And that will allow me then to select somebody from this list and then call an action on them, like pinning, unpinning, or sending a direct message uh, in the case of this example. And while this list is here, I can still search this. So if I wanted to do a search for um, anybody with the number five in them, you'll see I have two users who have identical usernames, and this is actually the case in this call, and they still are represented separately. And then a spectator 15 who has the five digit, and that means there's three participants in this call who match that list. So the list is searchable, and I'm able to select somebody from the list and call an action on them. So how does it work? Well, there's two JavaScript actors involved, uh, and I'll get to those in a second, but I'll start with the basic stuff. So Here's the Zoom OSC list listener. You'll see that under my communications tab and stream setup assigned to channel 50 is Zoom OSC slash user slash list. This is the output that gives us a full frame of data on every user. And inside of Zoom OSC, you will see that I am currently set to export that data every 100 milliseconds, which is the requirement for using Zoom OSC with Isadora on the output side. So every 100 milliseconds, I will get a frame of data when I send a list command. So the manually update list button very simply is tied up to the OSC multi-transmit asking for the list. So it pings Zoom OSC, says, hey, please reply with all of the full frames of data on every user so we can use their usernames. And as we pull in those usernames, we're scraping them off and building a trigger off of them with some time delays. And then we're populating this first JavaScript actor, which basically allows me to stream in a list of usernames and append a carriage return, backslash n, right, to every one of them. And that allows me to use the special format that Mark has created to be able to populate this dynamic list in real time. Um, and what I've done here is I've hooked it up to Mark's JavaScript actor, which he provided me, and I made a small change to it. But the general idea is that this allows you to, in input two, basically this allows you to call down the list to only contain elements that have the substring that are present in input two. And this is a really helpful way to be able to do a string contains inside of Isadora. So um, finally what I'm doing is I'm taking, as the list command comes in, I'm also populating a data array. And the data array is going to allow me later to reference the username of the person who I selected from this input list. So you'll see as I click through the different people on my list, if I click spec one, what I've done is I've passed in number three to the recall area, and then I'm able to recall the username from the database so that I can populate my other OSC multi-transmit buttons so that the pin, unpin, and message send are automatically populated um, with the correct user that we want to call the action on. Now, while this is good, unfortunately, these do not work together. So, for example, I can't, I can't do a search for, let's say, um, uh, anybody with the digit one in their list and if I click on spec 10 you'll see that I actually get spec 14 because we're recalling slot 6 because this is the sixth slot in this new list it actually doesn't remember what it used to be before because what's actually happening is the list is being changed in real time um, so we would need a way of pulling the string of this label as the optional parameter so that I could bypass this data array entirely not have to do any of this logic I would just be able to pass the selected value just like you can a numeric value, right? So right now you'll see 
uh, if you look over here at the recall area, it's giving me the index in this list as a number here. What would be great is if it detected that you were hooked up to an area that's expecting text entry, that it would allow you to actually pass the string of the of the um, excuse me, the radio button row that you're on, so that we could actually get this string spec 14 and not have to go reference it from a database that moves out of sync once you um, once you start searching that. But if you have another idea about how we can do this without any changes to Isidore, please sound off in the comments and let me know how to do it and I'll build it into this controller and we can talk about it. Um, so I'd love to see anything that you have there. But now I'd like to show you what this looks like when we actually deploy it on a real Zoom call so you can see um, all of the different options that we have from a structure built like this. All right, so I'm gonna call my manual update on the list. There are our names, minus Zoom OSC. And now I'm going to select guy from the list and I'm going to say send guy a direct message did you receive a message yes it says guy is great guy is great um, so clearly something's working I'm gonna pin you to my screen I'm gonna unpin you from my screen I'm gonna flip to gallery view um, let me try a uh, sub selection of this list so I'm gonna search for Orion Orion shows up on my list delete Orion's name Orion leaves and if I uh, let's select somebody else. Let's select maybe Tucker, and I will say hello. And I will send that message. I will pin Tucker, and there is Tucker's thumb. I will unpin. It goes back to Guy. Hop back to Gallery, and finally I'll demo the one error with this, which is if I search for a Guy, and then I try to write Guy, it will send it to Tucker. <laughs> so those things together don't work um, because searchable lists don't work at the same time as uh, having a uh, live input. And that is the one change I need to ask for Mark to make to the media server and then everything will work perfectly. So you can see this is the beginning of a really powerful workflow where you can create that custom interface to Zoom and build whatever logic you need on the back end through the node editor. We're really excited about Isadora and the way that it can work with that system. We're also really excited about an integration that's coming out with Universe Control, which is going to do a lot of very similar things to what you saw here in its own special way, which we're, which we're thrilled about. Um, so we'll be showing you more of that as we move forward. And yeah, if you have any ideas too about how I can get around that problem of searching a list and then trying to call an action at the same time, and if there's any way for me to reference the database in a better way, please let me know uh, on the comments on this video and I'll be sure to integrate those into the project and let everybody else know about it. So thank you and uh, we'll see you in the next one.